Hey, I'm Colonel Garuda, and today we're taking a look at the Star Wars Power of the Force 2 Bantha and Tusken Raiders set. As you can see, I do not have the packaging, so let's get right down to the review and see how awesome these toys truly are. Start things off by taking a look at the Bantha. This is a really wonderful creature. It's kind of hard to see what it really is underneath all that hair, but there actually are some little details that are hidden underneath the hair, like its eyes. You just get it out of the way. You got all that going on. It's got this really realistic look to it. And this is way better than the other Bantha that Hasbro made back, I believe, in 2007. It was like a battle pack, I think it was. And that one looked more like a Wookiee than a Bantha. But it's got these beautiful black eyes and the nicest big mouth. And I just think that looks really cool. Mine is in pretty decent shape, but there is a little, a little bit of paint scratches, or blemishes, I should say. It's really nice. And then, at the feet, it got those ultimate feet, which, fun fact, for those who don't know, in A New Hope, they, act they actually got elephants to dress up as Banthas on the set, which I thought was pretty cool. But I must have been horrible for those elephants, especially in the hot sun in the desert. And underneath, you got some nice sculpted in detail, makes it look more realistic. And the selling point of this Bantha is its ultra soft, real feel fur. And it's just really cool and it makes it feel very organic. And that's what I just love about this. And Kenner was known for its realism when it comes to creatures, not just in Star Wars, but also for their dinosaurs, which Kenner made back in the 90s with their Jurassic Park and the Lost World toy line. Which is also technically Jurassic Park. And it also has a saddle which can, you can remove. And now it looks more like a natural Bantha. Oh, all the hair's all over the place. It's got a comb it a little. <laughs> Absolutely awesome little toy that Kenner made back in the day. And I just think it's really neat. Taking a closer look at the saddle, it also got some nice detail and paint applications applied to it. May have a little flexible material. Not much under here. And this is the strap that you can use to adjust for your little Bantha. Hold on. It's actually here, so you can adjust like this. And it's a really nice little detail. It just clips on there like that to secure it in place. Now, the only problem I have with this set as a whole is that there's no way for the Tuscan Raider to really sit on there. It can sit on there, but it just rests like nothing really pegs in or anything. It would have been nice, which I'll, I'll demonstrate that in a little bit. And now, this Bantha actually has a little bit of articulation. Strangely, the horns can swivel. Which I think is really weird. I don't know why they did that. It didn't need to be a thing, but apparently you can do that if you like. The legs can also move, but the hair can kind of get in the way, and I don't want this getting damaged, so I do not really recommend moving the legs too much, but that is a thing you can do if you want. Uh, the back legs can also move, but again, I don't recommend this at all. I'm only doing this just to demonstrate the toy and everything, but it's very limited movement. And the tail on the back, and also swivel the tail you got uh, the trademark copyrights and some little details underneath the tail to give it some realism which is really nice and I did mention that this was made by Kenner but it's also I also had the Hasbro trademark underneath there which I believe this is the time when Hasbro and Kenner was merging and then eventually Hasbro completely took over the license and fired a bunch of people that made some of the toys that Kenner made, which was pretty shocking. But uh, that's all there is to really say about the Bantha, so let's move on to the Tusken Raider. Taking a look at the Tusken Raider figure, I think he's pretty neat as well. Let's take a closer look at the figure. He's got a really nice little head sculpt with some brownish paint, some silver, and some black for those little eye holes for his little mask. It's really nice. He also got some brown straps, I guess that's like ammo or something, or a little with little pouches on them. Looks really nice. He's got a nice belt. He's got some wear and tear sculpted in onto his little clothing. It's really nice. Now this is a soft goods. Which is great because it helps them sit on the Bantha much easier. Because if this is like a rubber material or a hard plastic, it probably would be impossible. And if you lift up the soft goods, 
As you can see, his legs are a little spread out. I like how it's all wrapped up. and kind of makes him look like a mummy, to be honest with you. And he also has some additional articulation, because not only can his legs kick, but they can also bend. And he also has a thigh swivel as well, which is really nice. As for other points of articulation, the head can move 360, and the arms can also move 360, which is a nice bonus. I mean, actually, technically, this is the bonus. But then he also gets that waist articulation, which is really nice. Uh, ooh, I got a little tight. I don't know if I want to move it too much. But that's the thing he can do. And this is just a really nice figure thanks to the extra articulation. But it can be a little tricky to stand because of the way his legs are spread out. But it is possible. And his only accessory is his, I think it's called a gaffer D stick or something like that. And it's got some nice painting onto it. It's got a nice silver here. Oh, it's kind of in the way. It's got some nice silver paint. And the rest is this brown plastic. You can only hold it in his left hand because his right hand is just a closed hand. You can't really, I mean, it looks like you could fit an accessory in there, but you can't, which is a little unfortunate, but it's not a huge deal. And now to get him onto the Bantha. Take the Bantha, zoom out a little bit. To get him on the Bantha, first we've got to put on the saddle, which can be a little bit tricky. So you just put it on like this. And the reason why I say it's tricky is because it's kind of hard to see where things are because of all the hair. But with some effort, it is achievable. There we go. Now that we got the saddle on, the converter can now sit on there. We just put him in a seating position and he should be able to just mount on top of the animal. And there you go. And now for some quick size comparisons. Here they are next to the high grade Gundam Revive, the Black Series Darth Nihilus, and Obi Wan's Jedi Starfighter. Overall, this set is really awesome, and it's easily one of my favorite 3 and 3 quarter inch Star Wars toys out there. I highly recommend picking this up because it's a lot more affordable than the battle pack that I mentioned earlier, and it also looks better, in my opinion, and it can be a little bit expensive on the aftermarket, but I think it's totally worth it. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the flip side.